we do have priorities as national human rights institutions and we should never be embarrassed about the fact that we identify groups that deserve our attention more than others. National human rights institutions, in my view, must focus on, and indeed their highest priority ought to be, the rights of the most vulnerable and disadvantaged in the community. They need to be very squarely in our set of priorities at all times because they are the people who for many reasons will not have their rights protected by the courts. We know that Indigenous people are disadvantaged, we know that women are not able to enjoy their rights on the same basis as men. We know that in most societies, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people are subjected to discrimination and very often to violence. We start with those groups that are experiencing or at risk of violations. Then we know that we're responding appropriately to the needs of our community. We uh, got a lot of complaints also uh, about honor killing and also about rape. In, uh, in more than 50% uh, rape happened with uh, children under the 18 years old. So uh, we started the first national inquiry about rape and also um, honor killing. We wanted to open this is in um, uh, find what is the reason why this is happening in Afghanistan. In my view, in our view in the Human Rights Commission, it's a criminal act, it's a violation of human rights of women. So we did this because of these issues. One, to break the silence and taboo in talking about these things. Secondly, to give awareness and alert the government and institution or state and institution that this is going on. Thirdly, to give awareness to the public that a girl who is a victim of rape should not be victimized again, and the state and institution should protect her even if the family doesn't protect her. State has the responsibility to protect her. It was not easy also the first because uh, this was very sensitive uh, issues and not acceptable by a lot of people. And it was very interesting because we brought victims, we brought the, fam the perpetrator, we brought police, we brought people from the court, from the prosecutor office to sit from the civil society, let's talk about this. So um, it was very, very useful because after that, media uh, played very, very good uh, role. Always they talk about that. And it, is, it gives a lot of information to the people. It gives a lot of awareness to the public and to the, to the uh, state and institution also. Because why this girl should be killed? Uh, they are victim, first of all, a victim of rape and violence already, and then you commit another violence in order to keep your honor. So after that, we have cases of very conservative um, society and communities in Afghanistan who bring their daughters to uh, Kabul, to the capital, and one of the, uh, the nomads uh, who are quite conservative, he came with his daughter and he said, to any television I'm willing to go and show my face and my daughter face in order to protect other girls. I mean, it gives us the courage and hope that the people really take these issues seriously. So I think this is uh, our responsibility to do for the next uh, generation. I mean, we continue to keep uh, pushing and we don't let the recommendation to stay in our shelf. We are in a process of reforming the law. Like we are trying to codify our criminal code and we try to add it on the, on the criminal code as a crime and have clear, specific punishment for it because we didn't have it. We didn't have anything in the law. So now the honor killing is not going unpunished or unnoticed. We don't give up, I don't give up, and uh, most of my colleagues don't give up. 